Hey there boys and girls, in a recent episode, I built this radius arm set. Now in that video, I said I do not like three links for street driven trucks. Actually really, I don't like three links for anything. Now obviously, because three links are relatively common, people wondered why I don't like them. Well, that's what this video is about. This is why I hate three links. And hate's a strong word, but it's YouTube and you have to get attention somehow. Now both of these systems are meant to do the same thing, which is control the front to back location of the axle, as well as the rotation of the axle. Now the radius arm, like I have here, controls the position of the axle, obviously with a control arm, this big guy right here, attached to the axle and attached to the frame. And you have this little stubby guy here, that basically just takes any of that rotation that axle tries to do and pushes it into this bracket. So basically your lower control arm controls both the rotation of the axle and the position of the axle, all in the same little unit here. Now in a three link, you have the same lower control arm, but all this stuff's gone. And instead you have a third control arm, as you might be able to see up here, that goes from the axle to the frame. So with that out of the way, let's get to the point of this video, which is why I do not like three links. I can pretty much sum it up in one word. It's kind of a big one, but it's redundancy. In a three link, you have no redundancy. Literally, if this control arm breaks, bolt, joint, whatever, control arm out here fails, control arm out up here fails, all those failure points in any of the three links that you have, if any of those go wrong, you are literally destroying most of your front end, most likely. Steering, toasted. Drive shaft, probably toasted. Oil pan, if your drive shaft goes, yeah, possibly toasted. Shocks, almost definitely toasted. And that is because once one of these links goes, you have only two links. 3 minus 1 is 2. And with only two links on a 3 link, you will still be holding the axle somewhat in position, but you will not be controlling the rotation at all. The whole axle will be able to rotate on the two joints that are left. So think about it. You remove this upper link tucked up in here. The whole thing rotates. Your shocks die. Now if you don't really understand why that happens, I'll show you. Alright, so as you can see, Radius arms are gone. Now you're just left with your three link. So let's just say this very lightly tacked bracket is representative of Cletus's 110 volt Harbor Freight welder welds. And this hammer, well, mallet technically, is representative of you getting it on the trail. And when they meet, Well, that sucked. That was one of your three link mounts. Ripped right off. Now, in very slow motion, let's see what would happen to the rest of your vehicle here. Oh good. My shocks have stopped the axle from rotating. That'll hold. Let's pop the shocks off. Let's keep going. See what else is going to happen to your rig. Okay, now your shocks are destroyed. What happens next? Well, by now your drive shaft's probably exploded. So that sucks. That thing could be whipping around like a fire hose now. And the track bar and steering joints are also completely maxed out. So either the jam nut will let loose, hopefully, and they'll just spin, or they'll break too. But hey, at least this three link was a little more flexible than a radius arm setup. Yeah, that would suck. Basically what I'm trying to say here is, if any one piece of your entire three-link system fails, your vehicle is completely undrivable and uncontrollable. Now let's compare that to what happens if something goes wrong in a radius arm. Let's say this guy right here, this bracket pops off, it breaks. You got another one on the other side that is still gonna be able to control the rotation of the axle and this lower control arm is still holding the position of the axle. What if this lower 
bracket down here rips off of the axle. Well, you still have this somewhat controlling the position. It's going to float around obviously because you've got two joints here. But it's still going to somewhat hold where this axle is and the other side's still going to hold your rotation. So, worst case scenario, your tire ends up in the front or back or front of your wheel well. Some body damage, that sucks, but it's not going to ruin your day. Now, worst case scenario, let's say you had old Cletus and his 110 volt Harbor Freight welder weld this frame side bracket on. That thing just rips off. Well, you'll no longer have any control over the front to back position of the axle on this side, but you will still have it on the other side. And that side will still be able to control the rotation of the axle. This control arm may kind of want to drop, but everything is still relatively held in place by your other side. And if one of these things goes, you're going to feel it and it's not like you're going to be able to keep driving. So your tire will likely end up either in the front or the back wheel well. It's going to suck. But once again, drive shaft, safe. Oil pan, safe. Shocks, safe. Steering, safe. Not saying drivable, but not catastrophically destroyed. Now you're going to hear people complain about radius arms. They're not everybody's favorite suspension system. The biggest thing that people complain about is that they bind, which kind of, yeah, I guess, especially if you're using hard polyurethane bushings. But this system here is running metal cloak Duraflex joints everywhere, and I'm able to fully flex 14 inch coilovers. Completely compressed, completely extend. And actually, if I wanted to, I could fit 16 inch coilovers in this thing and still completely flex them out. And this is not a particularly long radius arm setup. This lower is, I believe, right around 32 inches. So maybe a three link inherently has more of an ability to flex. It lacks the inherent binding that you get out of a radius arm setup, but Practically, is it really any more flexible than a radius arm that's set up well? Not in my experience. Another thing about radius arms, they're easier to fit than a three link. You only have to deal with two frame side link mounts, but you're still getting all that redundancy built in. With a three link, you have to deal with an extra control arm mount at the frame, and you have no redundancy for preventing the rotation of the axle. Now the best evidence I can probably point to to say that I'm right, which obviously I think I am, is that I am not aware of any vehicle released by any manufacturer that has ever used a three link suspension system. Maybe somebody in the comments can correct me on a true three link factory suspension system, but I don't think there exists one. When everything is working correctly, everything's fine, but if anything goes wrong, they fail catastrophically. And that tends to be something major manufacturers mostly shy away from. Radius arms, on the other hand, have been done by Ford, Toyota, Chevy, and I don't think I really need to go any further than that. Well, that's about all I have to say on this one. I'm sure the comment section is going to be just delightful because people get very defensive about their three links. But either way, if you guys haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Click the little bell so you get alerts for when I release a video. They come infrequently enough that that's probably a good idea. I'm working on it. Uh, spread the word. It's the best way to get more people to this channel. It gives me more ability to put more content out on this channel. So that's all I got to say. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.